some of the things that I want to teach you today in this lecture is what are some of your camera presets. These are the things that you can generally set up before you take pictures. I always advocate to shoot at the highest quality option that your camera allows you to do so. You can always choose to use a copy of that file at a lower image quality or a low resolution. That's your choice, but if you don't have the highest quality, you don't have the option of using it at its most resolved. ISO also is one of those presets. We'll talk about all these things in detail in just a minute, but the ISO stands for International Standards Organization. You don't need to know that. In the days of film, there was an ASA and a DIN, two separate numbers for America and Europe. They were different numbers. In the latter years of film, they switched to an ISO, which was a standardized number, and that's been adopted as well for digital cameras. The ISO indicates the sensitivity of your light-sensitive sensor to light. The higher the ISO number, the more sensitive your sensor is to light, but generally speaking, also more noise. So there's always a trade-off. The higher the ISO, generally the more noise. The higher the number, the higher the sensitivity, the higher the noise. White balance. If your camera shoots in RAW, you should shoot in RAW. That's going to be your highest quality file format. And for white balance, you need to know less about the quality of light and the color of light that you're shooting in than if you're not shooting in RAW. Then you have to match the white balance adjustments in your camera to the kind of light that you're shooting in. So you have to think about it more if your camera does not allow you to shoot in RAW. Exposure method, we'll talk about that, but that's whether you're shooting the pictures on manual where you select the shutter speed and f-stop, or whether you use some sort of semi-automatic, whether it's shutter speed or aperture preferred. Let's talk about those things in more detail. First off, you can generally, for digital cameras, find these things directly on the camera. Some of them will be menu controls that you'll need your LCD screen for. But on this example here, you can see that I can adjust my quality, my white balance, and my ISO all there together. So I would add to that what exposure method I'm using, but most of my control should be easily available to me. I show you some sample camera menus to show you the difference from camera to camera. This is something that without really seeing your camera, I may have difficulty assessing and it's something that you're going to have to get used to looking at the different icons that they use and the different terminology. But here you can see image quality. And so you might want to run through those different options and find the one that has the most pixels. And if it gives you the option of RAW, R-A-W, shoot in RAW. Again, here you can see that your ISO can be set via a camera menu. Well, again, these are on different LCD screens. This is going to vary widely from manufacturer to manufacturer, and sometimes within a manufacturer from one model number to another, they're quite different. So this is something that you should just get used to. And you may have to use your camera manual. If you don't have a camera or owner's manual, generally they're available online. I've yet to see a digital camera that you can't find a sample manual online, usually for free. So some of the presets and some of the other options are also available on screens on the camera. Here you can see an example where you can see the exposure method. And if you look below there, you'll see an M, that's manual. The 60 that you see there is for shutter speed. Shutter speeds, they don't usually include the entire fraction, but when you see 60, it doesn't mean 60 seconds. It's 1 60th of a second. And then the 
f-stop, which is your camera lens. So I'll talk about both of these things, shutter speeds and f-stops more in a minute. But uh, at f5.6, that's telling you that your camera lens is pretty wide open, meaning you'll have a shallow depth of field, but you have a lot of light coming through the lens to strike the digital array. So one of your presets is the ISO. That's the sensitivity of your sensor to light. The higher the number, the more sensitive, the more it uses your battery, but also usually the more noise. And I'll show you an example of that in the next slide. But you should know as you double the ISO number, as you go from 100 to 200 or 200 to 400 or 400 to 800, you're doubling the sensitivity of the sensor to light. If you cut your ISO in half, you go from 400 to 200, you're cutting the sensitivity of the sensor by one half. That's important to know because that corresponds to the camera shutter and f-stop that full stops, as they're called, as you open up or close down. As you open up, you allow more light to strike the digital array, you've doubled the amount of light, or if you close down a stop, you've cut the light by half, and you half the exposure. So in a way, ISO and shutter speeds and f-stops are interchangeable, although you can preset the ISO, and here's why. Your different options, and most sensors, some of them go really quite high, but slow, 200 ISO or less is generally going to give you a picture with a low amount of noise, but it's going to give you less options in low light situations. It's going to tell you there's not enough light there to strike the sensor. And so there's sometimes in lower light situations you need to use something more than slow. And so generally what I use is a medium ISO. I usually just preset my ISO at ISO 400. If I'm shooting outdoors or in a brightly lit indoor situation, 400 is a good ISO to use. If I know I'm just going to be outdoors and have plenty of light, I can shoot at 200 ISO, but 200 and 400 ISO, you're generally going to get a minimum amount of noise in that final image. When you get to faster ISOs, faster than 400, higher numbers, so you get into 800, 1200, 1600, etc., it allows you to shoot in places of very low light. At the same time, they usually create a lot of noise. And so you can see the difference in the example here. All these little extra digits that you see here are aberrant pixels that are reacting to the electricity coming through the sensor rather than to the light of the scene. They create what's called noise and generally interfere a little bit with the detail of your picture. Let's talk about the file formats that you have as an option. And this is one of the things that you should preset before you take pictures. The terminology may be a little different from manufacturer to manufacturer, but essentially with most digital cameras you have a few different options. A large image that's higher resolution, it's a larger file, a medium sized file, a medium resolution image, and a small or low resolution file. Those are usually only good for screen images, something that you're only going to use online. My suggestion always is to use the largest file that your camera allows. And so that's something that you're going to have to look at your camera menu and pick highest resolution. What the, again, the terminology may be different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Some may simply say fine. But if you have the ability to shoot in RAW, and RAW is one of your options, choose that. That's your best option. That's going to give you the best resolution. It's unprocessed data. It's going to give you the largest file, but it's going to allow you to process the data. And ultimately, you'll do a better job once you learn how to do it than your camera will making those decisions for you. 
So if you're only offered to shoot in JPEG, I don't know many cameras that shoot in TIFF anymore, but if you have JPEG or TIFF as an option, look to the one that creates the largest file size. It has the most pixels listed. And again, if it says something by 2,000 by 3,000, or most cameras will say more than that, use the one that has the highest number of pixels, the highest number. And that's going to give you the best detail that your camera allows. Again, if you can shoot in RAW, shoot in RAW. No question. It's going to simplify the color process for your image. And it's the best option that you have available to you.